Hi, speaking with Guido Embens. Yeah, this is he. Hi, uh, this is Adam Smith calling from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Hi. Prize. Hi. Um, sorry How to you call... doing? <laughs> very well, thank you. So, sorry to call so very early in the morning. And I... <laughs> so, well, things have been uh, hectic here anyway. So <laughs> no getting my sleep. For... <laughs> no, the day has um, the, the day is well underway. Um, I guess. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, were you actually asleep when the news came? Yes, yes, we were. And, uh, um, I'd managed to to go to sleep. I actually had a busy day yesterday. We went, I went biking here and to, taking the kids uh, uh, on some orienteering trip, and so I, I was mountain biking myself. So I was pretty tired by the, the end of the day. <laughs> well, so somehow your body has to cope with a day where I guess it's going to be hard to go back to sleep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure the adrenaline will get me through the, most of this. Indeed, and you'll be carried along by all the people wanting to talk to you. Um, exactly. Ah, and I think I hear the clanking of coffee cups around you, so maybe that's... Yes, so I'm going to get some coffee here. That's good. Um, very wise. Um, your work is all about asking where is the evidence and developing tools to extract that evidence from the data. I suppose a, a good place to start is, is to ask whether these natural experiments that you work on are hard to find or whether there's just an abundance of data out there and it's a case of just picking which bit appeals the most at the moment. I, I, I think the, um, part of the, the contribution, and, and in some sense that, that's sort of more just in uh, David's contribution, is kind of showing there's actually many of these, uh, many places where these natural experiments uh, occur. And I, I think, and you know, my part of the contribution is sort of then showing that if, you, if these things are there, then these tools are going to be very helpful, and that actually helps you see that many of these uh, uh, natural experiments are there. Kind of one of the, the techniques I've worked on is uh, regression discontinuity designs, and that, that's something that came up that was actually around in the psychology literature in the 60s, but it wasn't really used in economics. And then when in the early 2000s people started using that and the, the methodology got uh, improved, then suddenly people realized that there were lots of places where you could use these, uh, these methods. And the same with the, the local average treatment effect stuff. Once the, the methodology was clear, it became easy to recognize when, where these natural experiments were, when they might occur, and how you could exploit them. Mm. So it's really a very symbiotic relationship between the gathering yeah. of the data. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, the, what, what, where I was incredibly fortunate was very early in, in my career, kind of meeting up with Josh, and kind of seeing how he was working, how he was thinking about questions, and that helped shape my uh, research agenda in terms of the methodological questions, uh, and kind of uh, figuring out how to do econometrics in a way that was actually that was that was useful for empirical researchers. Mm -hmm. And kind of later, uh, I had uh, David Carr as a colleague. I had Wright Chetty as a colleague. Kind of. Uh, at Berkeley and uh, Harvard and Stanford and so I've been very fortunate to be around these incredible empirical researchers to kind of help ask great questions uh, for, the, for the type of methodological work I was doing. It's a lovely illustration of the social side of research that it's partly a case of sitting in your office and thinking and partly a case of talking to people. Well, yeah, the, 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 but again, when I the, was a first-year assistant professor, the, the, my senior colleague there, Gary Chamberlain, kind of said, you know, you need to go to the labor seminars. You need to talk to Josh Angrist. The, you need to listen to the, these people doing empirical work to, mm -hmm. to get, because that's, that's how you do good uh, econometrics. Mm -hmm. And it, it, was, it was exactly right, the, being around these these. Uh, leading researchers was incredibly uh, helpful for me in developing my own research agenda. What keeps you focused? What is it about the, the, the work that just keeps you going? Um, that it's, I, at some level, it's sort of like uh, uh, 
doing puzzles um, when I was a kid. I was in, into chess, and kind of once once I get hooked on a question, I, um, I think you know it, it, at some level econometrics is is kind of like it's just a, like applied math. You have to it's the the challenge is really coming up with good questions. But then once once I have a good question, I just uh, I, I get very deep into them, and I keep uh, I like keep mulling over questions, and uh, uh, I, I get a lot of enjoyment out, out of that. My my former colleague at Harvard, Gary Chamberlain, told me the story where when he learned that you could actually make a living uh, doing being an, an econometrician or being an academic economist and, and get to work on the questions you're interested in. And so that was just a great eye-opening experience. And, he, he just, and I, I can relate to that. <laughs> I just, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm incredibly fortunate. I get up in the morning and I like, I like going to work. I like working with the, the students, uh, working with young, smart people. Uh, there's nothing uh, better than, uh, than that. <laughs> beautifully said and and some days you end up getting up in the morning incredibly early <laughs> <laughs> well but, you know that, that it, I, it's, it's i'm incredibly excited but it's just that's really just icing on the cake I, I last week i loved getting up in the morning and going to work and if this hadn't happened i would still love getting up in the morning and going to work and working with the students there's a lot of projects i'm working on that i'm excited about uh um, and the, the only sad thing is there's no more hours in the in the day. I, I mean, I, I do some professional service. I'm an editor of one of the main journals, and so I, I like reading the, the the literature and kind of talking to people, going to seminars. So it uh, yeah. and you know, the, the sad thing at the moment is there's no conferences to go to to actually have the live interactions with people. Uh, but I, I set up this online econometric seminar a year and a half ago now that's been going on every two weeks uh, and that's that's been a real great thing for the the profession uh, mm. uh, to build a community in the, these challenging times well it does sound as if you are indeed very fortunate it's a you, it's a it's a lo lovely lovely thing you describe I, I have to let you go but i have one last question i hear people around you is it possible that somebody could take a photograph of you and send it to me yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. nobelprize.org yeah. because we we want to capture this precise moment we already have a photograph yeah, sure. of david card in his pajamas so you know this would be great <laughs> i'm not in my, uh, could somebody take a picture of me for the uh, for the sweets is it okay to have my kid kids yeah oh, it's, it's better to have your kids in it that would be be just okay. fantastic please okay just give me one second to... thank you so very sorry. much we're, we're just trying to get one of the kids uh... we'll talk again another time yeah, sorry I, I'm, I'm just losing a little bit Th thanks so much no well, thank you very much indeed and congratulations bye bye if you enjoyed this moment you might also like this special edition of the nobel prize conversations podcast Adam Smith takes a turn as guest and recalls his favourite moments from these very special calls. <laughs>